Okay, so this is the agenda. Um, I'd just like to do an opening remark to share with you who, who is in our room today. So together with, with me on my side and in our room, we actually do have our Deputy CEO, Selena, who will be talking you through um, agenda number, the second last agenda, which is about how to prepare for the IHRP certification later on. Uh, we also have Karina, who is part of the head of the professional practice team, who would share with you how to complete the application process. And again, my name is Nicole, and I'll be taking the moderator function as well as guiding the question and answer segment um, to, to share with you about, all, to address all your questions and share with you a little bit more about who we are and what's the certification all about. Okay, so let's move on. So the slide that you see over here, um, it really the the main purpose of it is to guide you through why why IHRP, why we set up, and what is it all about. So um, some of you may have heard about uh the Committee for Future Economy, or the Sectoral Manpower Plan, um, and also some have have asked about the HR Industry Manpower Plan. So some questions that we see popping up is how does that all fit together? Uh, so I, I'll start by giving you a very broad overview of, of how it fits. Uh, what happened was last year, if I'm not mistaken, the Committee for Future Economies came up with some recommendations on how to make the Singapore economy more competitive and um, more relevant for today's society because of the VUCA environment that we're operating in because of the many technological disruptions that we're facing. So what happened from their recommendations that there were 23 sectors that were identified to, um, to be developed and to be made more progressive in terms of, for example, um, building up their workforce stronger or in terms of streamlining some of their work processes in order to move the sector ahead in the global value chain. Under that 23 sectors, one of it was the HR sector. But as you know, HR isn't just a functional sector. We also do cover the broad, it's not, it's not sector focused, it is an industry. So what happened was, instead of calling it a sectoral manpower plan, um, it was renamed slightly to be known as the HR industry manpower plan. And as you see, this manpower plan was actually the very first of the 23 sectors to be announced. And that announcement came officially on the 10th of July, which is just last month, together with the uh, official opening of the Institute for HR Professionals. So Mrs. Josephine Teo, who is the second minister for manpower, was there at the launch. And really, the HR manpower plan serves the HR professionals, has an agenda also for the businesses and employers, as well as the HR industry players. Broadly, really, the focus for the HR manpower plan on why HR went first is two aspects. First of all, HR professionals themselves are the ones who are identifying the skills gaps as well as the skills that needs to be developed for the various sectoral manpower plans to move. That emphasizes a lot about the, the purpose and the reason why it's so paramount for the HR sector to be developed. But the second thing also is that HR acts as a change agent for all the different sectoral manpower plans and within every single organization. This is why there's so much emphasis and the spotlight is really on the HR professionals right now. And there's so much focus on us. And so it's very exciting that we could share about IHRP certification with you today. I'll be moving on. So. Um, I shared briefly about the national agenda and how that fits in. I'll share now about the about IHRP, uh, where we look at the mission and vision. So the vision of IHRP is really to be a world-class HR community, effecting purposeful change, both people and organization. Our mission, while we were only announced really recently on the 10th of July, um, it's one very broad and very important agenda, which is to be internationally recognized as the authority for HR. And how we're doing that is really by defining HR standards of excellence and leading the adoption of progressive HR capital, human capital practices. The approach and everything that we do within the Institute is uh, guided by these three key trusts, which is about professionalizing HR, enabling human capital development, and really fostering a vibrant HR ecosystem. IHRP really wants to be the home for HR professionals. It's like a safe space in which you can communicate, 
ask questions, provide feedback, participate in the discussions about everything related to the national agenda, which is really at the heart of it, trying to make people um, focusing on people as human capital, having HR as a strategic business partner more than just a, a silo based, very proficient in our HR technical field, but also to elevate and make HR a valued professional. So what you see on your screen right here is the IHRP certification level. Uh, for certification, we do have three tiers. At the very pinnacle of it, which is the top triangle that you see, is the IHRP master professional level. These what it, um, people who are within um, this professional level are typically senior HR leaders who are responsible for strategizing and directing the HR agenda. And it's all done at the operational wide level where they have a very strong um, partnership with the C-suite. One tier down is the senior professional level. Um, these are the HR professionals who are responsible for leading the HR function. Um, for example, they, their focus is in de designing and developing HR policies and programs and really providing day-to-day -day direction for their HR team. If you look one more tier down, the light blue component that's the IHRP certified professional level. Um, this certification is for HR professionals who are responsible for developing and implementing policies and programs to deliver to, that are to be delivered by the HR services and they run the HR function. So over here, one of the biggest questions that we always receive is, hey, I am interested in certification. I'm just not too sure. Is it better for me to go for the certified level or do I go for the senior professional level? So what we, what we are presenting to you on the screen right here is that we highlight to you the distinction side by side, the difference between a CP and an SP. So a CP, if you look at the bottom row, um, the CP is for you if you are in a HR managerial position or you're a business partnering role. And they are responsible for areas like, for example, developing and implementing the policies uh, and programs to deliver the function. You can see over there what others who have actually gone through the pilot program, and you can see what they say about the certification and also the type of titles that they hold. If you look up one more role is the senior professional level. Um, these individuals are seasoned and experienced as a HR leader uh, where they design and develop the policies and um, an example could be Aisin, who is the head of the human resources. So just to share, 88 um, HR professionals have actually completed the certification journey, and their convocation was like, their confirmation, pardon me, was held on the 25th of May. So what some other individuals have mentioned about the certification and their testimonials, you can actually see on your screen over there such as uh, Ms. Stephanie Wee, who thought that the process, through the process, she was able to appreciate the richness of the experience in her portfolio. And it's a very good reflective exercise that she underwent. Uh, for another individual, such as Ms. Stephanie Tan, she highlighted that being an accredited teacher professional is clearly the next step for her. And she was very pleased that she actually embarked on this journey. So we really encourage everybody in this room as well to really continue and participate on the journey because it does have a very meaningful impact on your own personal career. So I'll be moving on. This, will, this slide will actually give you an overview of the certification journey. Um, as you see on the extreme left-hand side, uh, if you're going for certification, whether or not you're a CP or an SP, there is an element of self-reflection. So for example, you could be reflecting on our slide on our website to see questions, for example, how to prepare for certification, what does that process look like. Um, you also have to think through, oh, what, what, what would I like in my own career? And then you can actually go online and look at the application form, which goes into stage one. So, okay, over here you see stage one. Stage one is related to experience and training review. I would like to highlight that each I, we recognize that some individuals have feedback that stage one seems very um, detailed and it's very tedious because there's a lot of elements to be filled up. Um, the reason why why there are so many components to be filled up, so for example, in, in addressing your relevance of the HR competencies, it's really because actually the, the assessment process already starts at stage one. 
So while you're submitting your CV, while you're submitting your testimonials and articulating how your experience relates back to the competencies, you're already actually undergoing and starting on the process of assessment. So we recognize that there's a lot to cover there, but this is the reason why instead of asking for all of that amount of information at stage two, we decided it was better to break it into two stages to make it easier for the applicant. So if you look at stage one, uh, specifically what you do online is that you need to submit, um, demonstrate 150 hours of HR education and training. You submit to us your CV so that you can demonstrate your HR work experience. Um, you share with us your own personal reflection that highlights your relevance to the HR competencies that we have in our body of competencies and also a declaration to agree with the code of conduct. In stage two, In stage two, this is the knowledge and application stage uh, where it's an on-site assessment that covers paper A and paper B for a certified professional and paper A and paper C for a senior professional level. We'll be discussing that a little bit more in depth in time to come, so do bear with us if we walk through that slightly later on. But in stage two, what happens also is after your assess after the papers are completed, every individual will also be given a feedback report that highlights what were your strengths that you demonstrated and what were some areas for improvement. That definitely would help in your own um, journey, learning journey as well. So after stage two, an individual is considered convert either at the CP or SP level. And stage three is really more about continuing professional development. Um, more details on that will be offered to an individual who is be completed and we will share that, that pack with that individual at that point in time. Um, I'll just like to flesh out slightly about the MP level. So some of some individuals have approached us to ask, oh, um, I see that there is an application phase for the CP and SP, but how do I start on the MP level? Uh, we'd like to share that the MP level is by nomination. Um, so if you're not very sure on how to, to well, what by nomination means, you can actually maybe write in to us and we'll share more details with you by email. Um, but th just to highlight, the assessment process for such an individual is slightly different. So you see under stage one, how they are, how they are assessed is really through the demonstration of they have practiced and taught leadership and also to their contribution to the HR community. In stage two, instead of sitting for assessment, um, so there's no physical test that we need to sit for. They are actually instead interviewed by um, a master HR professional as well as a business leader because the IHRP certification is future oriented. We want to suss out the business acumen and alignment as a leader to be um, more than just very, very proficient in your technical function. Underpinning all of this is really the learning and development plan in uh, what, that you undergo through the certification journey. So I'll pause there. Um, my time on covering the overview as well as giving you the background and strategic imperative of why we do the why what we do here at RHRP is done. I'll be passing on the time to the head of professional practice, Karina, who will walk you through step-by-step step, what to cover and what you should submit in stage one. Thank you, Nico. Hello, everyone. Um, so the subsequent slides, I'm just going to quickly um, go into a little bit of um, sharing about what um, it entails, you know, when you submit your application form. For some of you, hopefully you've already gone into the website and started the application process to familiarize yourself with all the different components that we're asking for. Um, so on this slide, you can see that there are several components. Um, there are seven listed here. Um, the first two on personal information and employment information are pretty much self-explanatory. Um, and then subsequently, what I'll deep dive into in the, in the following slides, uh, sections 4 on HR-related work experience, section 5 um, on education and training, which is um, part of the eligibility criteria, including um, you know, a clarification on section 6, which is the competency demonstration, and then um, closing out with supporting documentations and the self-declaration. 
So moving on to section four, which is HR related work experience. As you've heard from Nico, she's explained to you basically that there are two levels because of some people, some of the queries that we've been getting is when they reach this place, they got a little bit um, confused as to whether they should be applying for the certified professional CP level or the senior professional SP level. So just to recap um, what Nicole had um, clarified, the CP level is our first level of certification and it's for the HR managers or business partner role. And we're really not um, talking about people who may have just completed school and completed two years of um, HR. We're actually talking about seasoned HR professionals. Um, for, for the people in junior roles who are actually currently developing an associate's program, and that will be more appropriate. It's a non-certification um, credential um, level, but it's an associate program for some of the more junior folks who are very keen um, to be part of the IHRP community. But for the CP level, which is our first level of certification, we are looking at someone with seasoned um, HR experience um, some, somewhere along the lines of about five years and above. Um, then that's because when we do assess you um, in stage one and in stage two subsequently, the types of questions they were asking does tap into your experience level. So if you hadn't had ex sufficient exposure in that area, it may be a bit um, tough for you to um, address some of the, the questions coming out in the assessment. Um, for the senior professional level, IHRP SP, um, we're looking at um, an HR leader who's actually responsible for leading an HR function or department. So some of the questions that are targeted at them are actually more at the strategic level. And um, it's for folks who actually have had exposure because this is a very practitioner-based, experience-based assessment. So uh, when you get to this section, after indicating which level you're applying for, um, we would indicate that um, in the HR-related work experience, you don't have to list out your entire work experience because we can get that through your CV. What we're looking for is for you to highlight the company name, position title, and start an end date for roles relevant to the um, application level that you're applying for. We've also gotten questions where folks say, well, I'm still not very clear. Should I be applying for CP or SP? So this is where we want to assure you that um, if you are feeling that you may be at the cusp of CP and SP, um, you can consider applying for the SP level because during stage one, we will actually look at your application relative to the peer and at the role specific level. And if we find that um, perhaps the fit is better for CP, we will contact you as a follow-up um, and, and basically discuss with you whether or not you'd like to proceed forward to stage two at the CP level. Okay, so moving on to the next um, slide, we'll discuss a little bit about the HR-related education and training. We've also been getting quite a number of queries because th this is an eligibility criteria. Now, the first thing to highlight is some people feel it it's a bit daunting to see 150 hours is required. When you break it down, it's really approximately 19 days worth of training. And it doesn't have to be only recent training in the past one or two years. We're actually talking about cumulatively. We would like to find out whether you have um, been investing in your HR training. And it can be gathered either through tertiary education, which is degree um, or you know, diploma or even an HR qualification program. Or you can accumulate the 150 hours um, through HR-related training courses, internal, external, HR conferences, seminars, workshops, and in some cases, even HR-related internships. So we're quite broad in that definition of how you accumulate the 150 hours. So when you go into application, you actually just indicate um, the four radio button choices, whether if you've already got an HR-related um, qualifications, um, such as an undergrad in HR or master's in HR, you can tick that box, and all you have to do is basically upload your certificate to, um, to basically demonstrate that you've gotten that degree. Or if you don't have um, an HR degree, you've got something in business perhaps, then what you would do is you, you click on the radio button that, um, that allows you to list down um, the series of HR training courses, conferences, and so on. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Um, this is also another criteria. As I mentioned, this um, two-part uh, holistic assessment really is targeted at the seasoned and experienced HR professional. It's a practitioner assessment. So because of that, we are very keen to understand 
um, what are the competencies that you've mastered, uh, whether it be functional, foundational, or um, HR mindsets and behaviors that you've mastered throughout your HR career? In this case, um, we do. We would like for you to basically um, cite examples. Um, one example uh, for the functional competencies across plan, attract, develop, engage, and separate, and then subsequently uh, one example for each of the functional, uh, sorry, foundational and also HR mindset and behavioral competencies. Um, please do take note that in order for us to fully understand um, the competencies and the context where you applied it, it is important for you to describe the situation, the stakeholders, your actions taken, and also the results achieved. I can illustrate this point a little bit more in the following slide. So bear with me, there are quite a number of words on this slide, but this is what I mean by um, when you get to the functional competency, although it's just one text box, because it covers plan, attract, develop, engage, and separate across the um, employee life cycle, we do um, request that candidates provide one example. Sometimes the example could be repeated because your context or situation may cover um, you know, more than one competency area. That's fine. Um, so again, be sure to be specific in terms of what is the situation encountered, what are the stakeholders involved, your actions taken, and results achieved. We have um, seen some submissions that come in that said, in general, HR should do such and such. Unfortunately, that would not be sufficient for us because we really want to understand what you did in that specific situation. So try to be specific. We've given an example um, at the bottom here. So if you look at this, I, I'll try and break this down. This example actually covers all those four specific um, descriptors that we, we um, are encouraging you add in. I was involved in a retrenchment exercise affecting a group of bargainable staff due to economic downturn. Henceforth, the situation is a retrenchment exercise and it's affecting a group of bargainable staff. So that will be the stakeholder that's impacted. I had to carefully review past performances of staff to be retrenched and design the communication strategy and plan of the affected staff, the union, company, employees, and the press. So in that sentence, you'll see that reviewing the past performance and designing the communication strategy is exactly what was the action taken by this professional. And uh, the stakeholders that this was then um, submitted through to were the affected staff, the union, the company employees, and the press. And then lastly, in terms of results achieved, um, together with the team of HR specialists, I was involved in putting together the redundancy package to be paid according to the labor laws and collective agreement. I'm also pleased to have worked collaboratively with the union to find alternative jobs for the displaced staff within a short time period after their retrenchment. And so, Right in that sentence itself, you've again got um, specific actions, which is putting together a redundancy package, uh, making sure it's adhering to the labor laws and collective agreement. And then lastly, um, the result was that it seems positive that uh, you've worked together with the union to find the alternative jobs for the display staff. So as much as possible, we encourage that you, know, you do um, reflect your experiences so that we do justice um, when we're reviewing um, your submissions to know that this this is exactly you know the experience that you gathered through the years. Moving on to supporting documents, this is also another mandatory element because without the supporting document, um, it's also considered an incomplete application. So don't forget to upload your CV or resume. And lastly, um, the reference testimonial. We have gotten reference testimonials. They are more like character references um, and seems a bit dated. So just another reminder, when you do submit the reference testimonial, um, do try to leverage the template that we've provided and do factor enough time because um, some of the feedback we've gotten is the, um, some of the referrers um, have taken some time to get back. So without the reference testimonial and the CV, um, again, we are not able to um, complete the review of your application because it's a, a required supporting document. All right. I think now I'm going to pass um, the mic over to my colleague, Selena, and she'll actually take you through what's entailed in paper um, A, B, and C. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> this is Selena. Thank you, Karina, for that taking us through the stage one application. And please excuse my scratchy voice. I'm still recovering from a bout of 
laryngitis. I'm going to attempt to at least highlight some of the areas that um, through our engagement with professionals like yourself, they have said, well, a bit concerned around stage two, the assessment. It's been a long time since I, you know, been studied and taken an assessment and you know, granted there are some uncertainties around that. Right, so I'm going to just uh, take a few uh, minutes to actually help you walk you through that. Right, so if, what you see on the slide is that um, it summarizes for the different certification levels, what are the papers that you will need to take for the stage two on-site assessment. Right, so this on-site assessment, it is a written assessment. Um, you, <clears throat> you will be on-site and we will provide you with a computer and it will be an online assessment. So for the certified professional, you will take papers A and B. Papers A is an MCQ, 30 questions, and it will be round of different employment legislations. Paper B will also be multiple choice questions, and this will then um, be assessing the, the range of the body of competencies um, that Karina uh, walked you through just now. Right? Um, for the senior professional, you will also take paper A, which is a legislation paper, and a paper C, and paper C is an open-ended short answer question um, paper, right? So for both paper B and C, these are both kind of situational judgment kind of questions that will be assessed. There will be case studies, and for paper B, it's looking at how you may um, develop and implement certain uh, HR programs and policies to address and help solve business challenges. Paper C will then focus on your strategic application of your knowledge, right, to solve the business uh, challenges, right? So that's the difference uh, for the certified professional and the senior professional. For the master level, the assessment is a different process, so we will not cover that today, right? And the next slide, we'll, we thought we'll just give you three big tips on how you can possibly prepare uh, for the assessment, stage two assessment. Right, so it's around three key things, right? So one is familiarize, two is reflect, three is socialize. So I'll just take the point one at a time. So the first step is really to familiarize yourself with the assessment format and online resources. So in the, the previous slide, we have summarized the assessment format for the different papers. Um, but there's more information available on our IFIP website. The link is found on that slide. And then you can, you can actually... Uh, Take a look a little bit more. Paper A is actually an open book um, assessment, and I'll elaborate a little bit on what that means in a while. So for paper A, um, it covers employment legislation. There will be websites available, so you can actually take the time to familiarize yourself with both the legislations, the websites that we will provide during the on-site assessment. For each question, you will have links. As well, you can familiarize yourself with sample questions that are available on our website. So similarly for paper B and C, how you can prepare to familiarize yourself with the IHRP body of competencies. Um, so it's the functional competencies, the foundational competencies, as well as the uh, mindsets and behaviors that will be assessed, right? And um, familiarize yourself with the sample questions as well, because that will uh, does show the breakdown of how, uh, what kind of answers we're looking at, at, both the implementation as well as the strategic applications. Right, so that's the first step that you can take. And so the online resources, that there is some stuff that we have already put on the, our website that can help you. Secondly, I think this is a big piece, and we will do a lot of this. Um, as um, Nico and both Nico and uh, Karina had mentioned, there's a bit of reflection, a reflective process that you need to go through, actually, as part of your whole stage one uh, submission. Right, so reflect on your HR experience and other best practices. So this is the second thing you can do. So reflect on your HR experience and what you've been doing. And Karina mentioned that this is a practitioner certification. So this is really reflecting on your HR practice that spans across the, the whole um, HR life cycle and all the various HR functions, right? And also think through of your experience um, in respect to the um, issues that you have had to deal with regarding the employment legislations and all the various HR um, functions in the VOC, right? You can also then reinforce your experience with other learning resources, and we've listed a couple there. You, if you're concerned about, you know, your, the employment act, employment act that you can refer to practical, the practical guide, you can also go online to look at some good practices from TAFET's resources on fair employment practices. 
as well as you can go and attend our training programs. All right, just, just to highlight, we are in the midst of accrediting certain training programs to then help um, individuals address certain competency areas that they want to develop further. All right, and these uh, programs will be aligned to our body of competencies. Finally, the third point is about socialize. Socialize with your, you know, your, your HR, socialize your HR experience with others, right? And this is about talking to your fellow HR professional. Perhaps you are currently now doing a little more of talent management and previously you had done, um, you know, areas of engagement or correct, perhaps now you are a business partner. But there are areas in other businesses, right, that your other business partners face different challenges or your other colleagues handling different work areas actually have um, common business situations and challenges that they face and the future solutions that they bring to, to their, um, their partner, the, their business leaders and, and uh, workforce. So you can share your experience, gather um, what they experience and you can and do a lot of sharing around that so that it can also uh, kind of uh, support your learning, right? And you can, and the last point here is about forming a discussion group. Actually, the, um, Nicole mentioned that we have 88 certified professionals and these are, this actually comes from 88 professionals. They said they form study groups over lunch, over tea, right? Actually to discuss scenarios and possible scenarios and share knowledge and experiences. So that's something practical that you can do, right? And um, before we move on to the next slide, I just want to highlight that we will send you an information pack with details on the logistics and also help you familiarize yourself with the online assessment interface ahead of your stage two assessment. So not to worry, we'll, we will give you a, a, some more tips um, when before stage two, All right? On the next slide, just a little bit of highlight. Um, this is some of the links that will be provided um, for your paper A. So you should go familiarize yourself. We've um, given you an example of a specific link here. And so this is a time saver tip because on the day of your assessment, you will have such links on each of the assessment question for paper A, right? So if you are familiar, you are familiar with the links, you are familiar with the the legislation act, it will be kind of save you time uh, for you to uh, actually go in and search for answers. And the one that we've provided here is the MOM link, and actually you can actually go in and search for uh, various um, uh, the employment acts and the legislations, right? So familiarize yourself with that, and this. Second slide for paper B and C, really the preparation tip, the, the key thing here is that um, for paper B, we want you to prepare, look at the body of competencies and you will see the difference between what's um, required for a certified professional, uh, which is about developing and implementing HR programs and policies versus for paper C, it's really looking at um, the, the key considerations for strategic applications to achieve business outcomes. So that's the differentiation between the two levels. So the preparation you can um, actually do is really review the sample questions provided, reflect on what business challenges you and your HR colleagues have faced in the past or how you have helped your businesses or need to help your businesses to solve. Those are these things that you can actually reflect and have discussions around. Right, so that's what um, we have for, for now, for today. And um, like I said, we will come back to you on more tips and also give you um, some visuals of what you can expect at the actual on-site assessment and what you will see on the screen and uh, to navigate around for the assessments. All right, so that's um, just going to sign off and pass it back to Nicole to wrap up and we will be around too for a Q&A session uh, shortly. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so it's me again, Nicole. I'm just mindful of the time. The time right now is 7.40. So we did mention that we do have a Q&A session. So before we jump into that in detail, where I have about 20 minutes and more, if, in case anybody would like to stay back to also ask your questions, we'll still be here past 8 o'clock. Uh, we'd just like to very quickly walk through what the certification schedule is going to look like. So for the CC, the upcoming dates are on October 25th and October 27th. The cutoff date for your submission for Stage 1 um, was originally on the 25th of August. Uh, we've actually, for, for all of you who are in the room today, we'll be extending that to 1st September, which is next Friday. So we certainly hope and look forward to the submission of your 
um your your stage one online uh submission so that you'll be able to make it for the October date. For those who are unable to make it for the October dates, no worries because we'll also be um running another assessment uh run in November. So you can look on the screen and the screen says November 15 and 17. Um, this is also the same dates offered to the senior professional level. So if you're interested for that, um, the cutoff date is somewhere in mid-September, if I'm not mistaken, 15 September. And prior to that, we'll also be running some online clin uh, some clinics, not online, clinics in, in somewhere in early September. So do keep a lookout for some of the millers that we have if you'd like to participate or you would like to ask a little bit more questions or have a guided session on how to submit all your paper for um for stage one. Uh okay, some people have also asked about the fee concern like that are involved for the certification. Um what you see on the right hand side right now are the fees for the non -Singap non Singaporeans. So for the certified professional level, it breaks down for you how much it costs for stage one and stage two. Uh, but the total fees for a CT level is 1350 and for SPs is 2150. But if you note, uh, the CP of the, the subsidy, subsidized fees for the Singaporeans and Singapore PRs for CPs is $150 and $240 for the SP. So that's really a really big um, saving that you'll be receiving as a Singaporean or Singapore PR. So I urge every one of you in the room here. Um, to really go on and um, do the certification because it's, it's really something that we're trying to uh, encourage Singaporeans to uh, partake in. That's why the high degree of subsidy. Oh, yes. Uh, also, a little bit of uh, some advert time. Um, those, those are the dates that we mentioned in terms of the cutoff. But uh, for early bird, if you're signing up by this Friday, uh, we do have a uh, sort of incentive for you or like a goodie for you it's really that we are going on a learning journey to the OCDC campus on the 31st of August and that's next Thursday um, if you do complete your online stage one submission by this Friday you'll be sent an invite to join us for this learning visit uh, the OCDC campus is really a state-of-the-art campus well designed the team's gone there once and we were in awe of what was going on because of the dedication as well as the commitment that OCBC demonstrates to learning. Um, for those of you who, who are not familiar with where it is, the OCBC campus is actually located right in the heart of the CBD. It's literally a stone's throw away from Tanjong Paga MRT station. And it's a $10 million facility where they actually own the whole space for the purpose of this training. So if you'd like to learn more about how they do their L and D, you'd like to learn a little bit more and visit the campus, please do sign up by Friday and we look forward to seeing you next Thursday at OCD. Okay, I'll be moving on into the QA session. Okay, um yeah, actually on, on my team we're suggesting that we see a lot of questions coming in. So instead of walking through the FAQ where you can actually read down the responses on your screen, uh, maybe we would go straight into the questions. Um, and I'll have my team on standby also to take all these questions. So let's look at the very first one. The very first question is, how does IRP certification, uh, how is it suitable for talent acquisition professionals as they play a major role in policy for hiring, for budget, etc.? Anyone within the team? Just a moment, Karina will take this question. Hi, Prem. Uh, I think this question is from you. Um, while what we're looking for in assessing um, at this certification um, juncture is looking at someone with a breadth of experience, um, some of the specialist uh, roles actually do um, within their day-to-day are able to display or work on engagement across the breadth of um, the functional, foundational, and HR mindset behavior. So we feel that um, your role has given you the opportunity. By all means, I think um, this is something where you are able to demonstrate when you submit the application. Um, just to let you know, at the moment, it's a generous pathway, and therefore um, what we're assessing for is the breadth across the competencies. 
Um, however, um, in 2018, 2019, we are looking to develop specialist pathways. So um, you feel that perhaps your current role um, is more narrow um, to talent acquisition and you're unable to demonstrate breadth across the competency areas. Stay tuned um, um, when, you know, when we actually roll out the specialist pathway, that's something that may be more appropriate for you. Uh, the next question, I think it's from Shruti. Um, you mentioned that you have about four years of HR experience and an MBA in, in HRM. Would you qualify for the CP level? I know initially I did mention, um, roughly, we we're looking at seasoned professionals with five years and beyond. I think um, that's just a, a, an average um, that we were looking at. Definitely, if you feel that your four years of experience actually has been very fruitful and you're able to have the opportunity to work across the breadth of the competencies, um, that we've outlined, uh, I think that's something that, you know, I encourage you to submit your application for. Um, so again, you know, the reason why we, we are indicating a seasoned HR professionals is because um, both the stage one um, review of your competencies as well as the stage two on-site assessment really um, will be assessing your, um, you know, breadth and depth of knowledge. And therefore, that's, that's why we roughly indicate an average of about five years. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, I think that may have been answered, um, but I'll repeat that. There was a question about what is the difference uh, between the certification by IHRP and SHRI. Um, so we have uh, a memorandum of understanding um, with SHRI uh, where with the launch of this nationally endorsed um, IHRP certification, SHRI is actually um, going to cease their accreditation so that it's not so confusing out in the marketplace um, to have two credentials. So we're actually currently, um, you know, working closely with SHRI um, on, you know, finalizing this and, and have only one credential moving forward. We have another question um, from Judith. Ah, this is an impo uh, important clarification I think that would benefit everyone. Um, I think when I highlighted the fact that we do have a template testimonial um, that's out there, um, the question was, I've already previously submitted a testimonial without um, being aware that there was a template to follow. What will happen? So actually, we, we do realize that maybe some people may not have been aware of this. So we have team members actually following up um, as we're reviewing and screening the supporting documents to reach back out to individuals who may not have, um, you know, uploaded the correct template. And we are actually following up with each of them um, to, to actually clarify this and get them to upload uh, the testimonial again. So Judith, um, you should either have heard from us or we'll be hearing from us shortly. Okay, another question from the date of interview with panel. How long will it take for the application to know the outcome? Um, so just to clarify, uh, for the CP and SP levels, there is no interview panel. Um, as mentioned, everyone will go through stage one, which is submitting their documentation and so on. Um, and once they clear that stage, um, they can go on to take the on-site assessment, which is either um, both both uh, levels would take paper A. And if you're at the CP level, you take paper B. Um, and if you're at the SP level, uh, which is the next level up, you will take paper C. Um, so there really um, is no interview panel. The interview panel is much more so for the, um, the pinnacle level, which is the IHRP master professional level. Um, and that is at the moment by invitation only. Uh, and, and what happens, I think there was a question about how soon will you be notified. Uh, I think when you submit for stage one, we have a cutoff date, um, and that's when we actually start reviewing the applications um, in detail. So right now we're just screening them to make sure the documentation is on order, but we actually start assessing and reviewing them in, in depth after the cutoff date. So Nico mentioned for the October, Cutoff that is September 1st. And if you're applying for the November 15 or 17 um, assessment dates, uh, the cutoff is September 15. So we take about 30 days. Uh, our SLA is 30 days to turn, turn that around. So we will announce the results um, of whether or not you cleared stage one 
of the um, assessment about one month prior to inside assessment date. So in the case of the October 25th or 27th run, you'll hear back from us uh, at the end of September. And then um, similarly for November 15 and 17, you'll hear back from us um, at the October uh, mid-October time frame. Um, okay, sorry, I'm trying to read questions and, and uh, answer at the same time. Uh, I have a question here. What if I'm in l and I would like to know if it will still be relevant for me. Um, it, seems the it seems like this is uh, more appropriate for HRBP or HR generalists. Um, okay, so so again, I, I um, it's the same uh, response as to the earlier question about um, someone being in the talent acquisition role. Sometimes in L and D, I do understand that um, you will get exposure to working across um, the breadth of the competencies, and so if you can um, demonstrate, you know, your experience and being able to apply knowledge um, and also experience across the competencies, this is something that's appropriate for you. Just to let you know, um, as part of the 88 pilot participants, we did have um, a few specialists um, who had applied and they actually did manage to clear um, the assessment. So I think, you know, what's really important to, to think about is, you know, what has been your past experience and has it, um, you know, been able to demonstrate the um, breadth across the competency areas. Uh, I think Brandon Poon, you had a very similar question um, coming from global remuneration. Um, in your current career, you are in expatriate talent mobility. Um, again, I believe in talent mobility, you do have to cover the breadth of the employee life cycle, but with the target population of the expatriate um, employees. So in that case, um, it, it should be relevant. I mean, I would encourage that you take a look and download our body of competencies to understand the breadth of competencies they are covering across the functional, foundational, and HR mindsets and behaviors. If you continue to have questions and clarifications, do feel free to reach out to us. Um, the easiest way will be through um, our hello email, um, hello.ihrp.sg. Um, sorry, hello at <laughs> P.SG. Um, and you know, we do have people on standby to address these queries. Um, there's a sorry, there's a question. There's an associate level. How can I go about with the application? Um, very happy to hear there's an interest already for our associate program. Uh, we are currently working um, with some of the institutes of higher learning to actually pilot this out um, with some of the HR majors. Um, and subsequently to that, quite shortly after that, we'll actually be rolling out, out to the junior HR professional population. So rest assured, if you um, are very uh, excited about the IHRP certification and being part of a community, we will have a program for you, even though you may not yet be ready for the first level of certification. Another question. Oh, sorry. I have sorry. <laughs> many people want me to answer many questions, so <laughs> give me one second. Okay, I have already submitted my stage one documents, but up for November assessment as um you know a conflict in October has come up. When will I be notified for qualification for stage two? So um you know I've taken a note of your name, uh, Hudson, and we'll just double check that if you um are indeed signed up for the October one and are not able to change it, um, we will look to um, update that. We'll, we'll reach out to you to clarify that. Yep. Okay, I, uh, I'm going to pass the mic back to Nico, um, who will wrap up for us. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm mindful of the time. The time now is 7.54. So we do have five more minutes before the end of the official end of this session. Um, that said also, there are still questions coming in. So feel free to just ask us your questions and you can stick around even after eight o'clock and we'll address them one on one. Um, some reoccurring themes that I'm looking at is concerning the OCBC learning visit. There are individuals who are asking whether the testimonials need to be in by Friday. 
um, that Friday is a really tight timeline, um, that uh, is a OCBC learning visit during office hours. So I'd like to address that right now. Um, the OCBC learning journey is, yes, during office hours on Thursday from 3 to 5.30 in the evening. Um, the reason why we need it in by all, all the submissions in by Friday is really because um, there's not enough turnaround time for clearance at OTBC site. So we do apologize for the very short runway leading up to submission on Friday. Uh, but it's been ongoing comms that we've been doing since uh, the official opening of this um, assessment date. So if you feel you really would like to participate and you're really keen and you're going to submit everything um, in time and in order, Feel free to approach us. We would take it on a case by case basis to see whether or not we can extend the extension time for you and allow you to go for the learning visit first before the official card off date. But definitely is something we would like to explore. So don't don't feel as though it's a done deal, it's not a close spell. Don't worry about that. Okay? So that's for the OCBC learning journey. What we'll be covering during the session is really learning more about their LMB function, a little bit about their uh, HR. And more importantly, and what I found interesting is that we're going to learn about how they apply technology um, at, the, at the HR and in their HR work that they do at OCBC. So if you're interested, uh, do let us know. And also, if you quit six months, you'll be hearing from us really soon um, on, to give you more details about this learning journey. The second one that I'm getting a lot of questions over is concerning the slides and the recording of this session. We recognize that some individuals actually did come in slightly later and you may have missed out the first few opening slides. Don't fret about it. Uh, we definitely would be circulating this slide. Um, if it's not tomorrow, it's definitely by the end of the week as we also want to slice out the webinar that was recorded today. So we'll be sending across the link to share to, so that you can share even with your friends or anyone who you think might be interested to learn the in-depth of step, the stages and step-by-step -step process of application. So don't worry about it. We're definitely going to send that across. I just wanted to emphasize it at this point in time. Yeah, so I note the timing is 7.57. Um, officially, I can close off this session here tonight. For all those who participated and asked all your questions and you've gotten what you required from this session, I'd like to really thank you for your time for spending a whole full hour with us after office, rushing back from work. I get it. It's tiring. We just really want to say thank you and thank you for wanting to be a part of the IHRP community. We appreciate it and we really look forward to looking for your applications coming in. Um, for the rest who are still interested to ask some questions, I do see some questions coming in. Please feel free to stick around. We will definitely be taking your questions and we will still be online. Um, with that, I'll thank everyone and we'll convene again maybe in about two minutes. So um, stick around if you've got any questions. Thank you. We're just taking a couple more questions. Thank you for staying on. Um, think there's one question around whether the completion of the stage one application and whether we need to complete all the nine competencies. So the answer is yes. Please um, 
do your best effort to uh, let us know because that's a key part of our uh, review of your uh, your actual experience around the, the around the HR functions. Um, there was a, another question around um, if you've already submitted your application, whether um, we will just be reviewing based on what you submitted or will there be a chance for you to actually, will we call you for some clarification? We'll, we'll take note of your name. And yes, if you have submitted, there is, a there is an opportunity for you to actually um, update it and we can uh, contact you to clarify. So we've taken note of your name or if there are others who have not asked this question, feel free to drop us a note and we can also um, kind of really flag out um, your case and actually get back to you. All right, so that's around the submission. Um, there are questions around um, the recognition of the IHRP certification. Um, number one is uh, whether it's focused on the Singapore legislation. At the moment, yes, the IHRP certification is the national uh, certification in Singapore and the paper A assessment is focused on the local legislations. Um, not to worry if you missed the point earlier, actually paper A is an open open book assessment. So there will be links provided even during the on-site assessment where you can actually go to review the legislation. Right? The assessment questions will be focused around the application and understanding of an interpretation of the, the laws and applying them in uh, questions that are situation-based and reflective of day-to-day -day, um, situations that you face in your HR work. Um, you can go to our IHRP certification website to take a look at the frequently asked questions. Right, then round the recognition of the certification. Um, we are working to have employers recognize this certification. Um, we must say that this is really only at the beginning, right? We've only just started, so um, it will take time to build up that recognition. Okay, so and we will work with international HR bodies to also um, have our certification uh, receive some kind of reciprocal recognition. Right, so there is a question around the difference between this and the, the SHROOM or the HCI certification. Currently, uh, the difference is the focus um, for us is on the local legislation, but uh, it's similar in the sense that it is situational based judgment questions and uh, multiple choice questions for the uh, certified professional level. Right, so that's the question around that. Um, how much time for paper A and B? So 75 minutes for paper A and two hours for paper B. Right. Okay, so there's a question around if actually I have regional experience, can my competencies be demonstrated from regional experience? Simple answer to that is yes, definitely. Because regardless of where your experience is gained, if it's HR experience, um, functional across, um, it's relevant. Okay, just a minute. Let me just see. Okay, on site open book assessments, we are not allowed to bring our mobile phones. So, what kind of references can we refer to? So, that's a good question. Thank you for that. All right, so for paper A, um, this is an open book assessment and paper A will be taken by both the certified professionals as well as the senior professionals. Yes, you will not be allowed to bring your mobile phones in or notebooks, so um, no mobile devices or your own personal uh, uh, devices. Uh, the assessment will be online through a uh, learning management system on site. We will provide you the computers and we will uh, have the links to the various um, legislation acts available online uh, during the assessment. So for example, if you have a question and, and the question is around the uh, CPF, right, there will be a link that you can actually go to the CPF site um, around the CPF Act and to read on the legislation. Right? So um, in my earlier uh, brief on the stage two assessment, one of the tips is to actually familiarize yourself with the various legislation links as well as the MOM website because you can actually do searches on the MOM website. So these sites will all be enabled during your on-site assessment. Okay, um, just a moment, what else do we have? When will you know the result of um, when you can take the on-site assessment? So if you have applied for October assessment, you will receive your notification one month before the date of the assessment. If it's for uh, November, if you've already submitted for November, you will hear one month before the November date, so by mid-October, right? 
Oh, when for the certified professional level, after you've completed stage two, your on-site assessment, you will receive your results in three to four weeks after your assessment. Okay, so there are some, I have seen two, at least two questions regarding referees. Um, so whether, one is whether the referee needs to be a HR professional, and two is uh, that you have lost contact with several of them, and uh, is, this, is this referee someone who must know your work experience? Is the referee a must? Oh, okay, so yes. Yes, we do need a reference. So we do need a referee. Um, your work experience is augmented and validated by the referee. Uh, so um, do contact someone that you either work with now or uh, you've worked with previously who can um, actually comment or validate your uh, work. Right. So it could even it so it doesn't have to be a HR professional. So it doesn't have to be your supervisor at work. It could be a peer who actually can um, comment about your work. It can be one of your business managers that you support as a HR partner, right? So that's for the references. Okay, I think there's a question round if you have actually submitted. No, I think you'll find it. That If there are some, I mean, there are some technical uh, questions around. Probably those are specific to your your situation, and we will answer them offline. I think we have addressed. Okay, now just maybe we take this last question um, regarding the uh, reference. And what is uh, re required in the reference? I think there is a there is a template that is downloadable when you complete your stage one assessment uh, that you can actually send over to your referee. Right? You can download it and you can actually see what it encloses. We will include it in the deck so that you can actually have uh, um, you can see what it looks like. Yeah, we'll include the visual of what the testimonial needs to look like in the slide deck before sending out to you. Uh, no, your, uh, your referees do not need to uh, address all the competency areas. Um, the competency areas is a, your own personal reflection uh, to be submitted in that stage one. Okay, I think we have addressed um, the questions as much as we can. I hope that has been very helpful. And yeah, we see some thank yous coming in. Uh, so thank you for being with us. Um, and we look forward to welcoming you alongside the 88 certified professionals and welcoming you on board our, uh, you know, into our HR community. Right. So thank you very much for your time. Have a great evening ahead. Thank you.